for the vacant IBC Welterweight Championship of the World. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the purple and gray, and weighing in at 146 and one quarter pounds, from the Big Sky Country, Great Falls, Montana, this 1988 U.S. Olympian is now 33 and three as a professional. 29 of his 33 victories by KO. Ladies and gentlemen, he is the former lightweight champion of the world, Todd Kidd. And his opponent across the ring, wearing the black and silver, and weighing in at 146 pounds. In his professional career, he's captured three world titles with a record of 48 and three. 20 KOs, pardon me, 22 KOs to his credit. Fighting now out of Clewiston, Florida, ladies and gentlemen, the former three-time world champion, Hector Macho Camacho. Gentlemen, you were both given your instructions by the New Jersey Control Board. Protect yourself at all times. Touch gloves. Wait for the bell. Todd Foster, a punch stat champion. He throws about 80 to 100 punches per round, and uh, he said he will be making contact with Camacho. He'll be going right at him. Young man has won 33 and lost three. A lot of championships uh, around here, but uh, Foster was never a world champion. The highest he was ranked was number eight, but he is currently unranked, and he is looking straight across at the man who really can re-energize the career of Todd Foster in Hector Camacho. Camacho at the age of 32, but he is just finishing, Sean, the busiest year in his career going back to 1985. He had five fights in 1994. Usually he's fighting somewhere around two, maybe three times a year. And quite frankly, that was getting him into trouble. He had so much time between fights, he'd get into tr trouble. Now he's training all the time for all these upcoming fights. And he has really put it together after most people figured it was over. After Chavez, after Trinidad, and the Camacho showing a turn. And here he has a fighter who he feels made to order. Todd Foster just coming in. Yeah, Todd Foster's going to come right to him and coming in right to him early in this fight, the two banged heads. That's some of the changes that you're talking about, about Hector Camacho. He's busy, he's active. It is difficult to beat an active fighter. And he has certainly been that. Now he's fighting, you know, not, he's been fighting nobody's recently but he has been performing in front of a crowd in the ring well, he's been very honest with his comeback yeah. uh, honest in the fact that he is training he is in the ring he has a sense of purpose both in the ring and out of the ring but also honest in the fact he says hey the last four guys that I fought after Trinidad this year I mean I was overmatched and I should have been knocking these guys down he also feels that he's about two levels above the talent of Todd Foster. So uh, Hector Camacho never pulled any punches, and he's honest about the, the assessment of himself. And he also knows he has to look sharp, and he has to look explosive. And he is, uh, seems to have had a little power going up to 147 pounds. Uh, quite frankly, he's down now tonight to uh, 146. His last four fights have been in the range of 151 and one to 153. Not looking like the macho man, looking like the muscle man in some of those fights, but he is, he's trimmed, he's serious, he's on a pay-per-view fight. If he wins this fight, he looks ahead at, at, at the guy he wants is Pernell Whitaker. He says Whitaker stepping up against Julio Cesar Vasquez as a junior middleweight, moving up perhaps just for that one fight. There's, there's no names out there in Camacho Field in the welterweight division. And now Camacho putting together 
some of those speedy combinations. He gets Foster coming in. Oh, again, it's Camacho. And Foster now keeping his distance as the first round comes to an end and give that one to Hector Camacho. Oh, yeah, wobbled in that first round. Todd Foster. Off to a good start, Hector Camacho. Libra from New York City. Big round of applause. Outstanding trainer giving great directions. There's some of the touching from Hector Camacho, touching from that southpaw stance and backing up is, is Todd Foster. Where Todd Foster has had trouble in his career has been when he straightens up and backs right straight up. Which you saw at the end of the first yes. round. And look at the respect he's now giving to Camacho. He is not on top of Camacho, he's not in range to touch him. Camacho, even when they're in close, has the moves, has the angles. Yeah, and this is craftiness from Camacho. See inside, Hector tying up, holding on. He said, I'm a better fighter now because I don't want to get in trouble out of the ring. I'm more stable in the ring. I'm skilled and I'm polished. The last title that uh, Camacho has owned, the WBO Junior Welterweight Championship. The Boom Boom Mancini, and that was four years ago. And if you're not counting WBO titles, you go back to 1986 when he was the WBC lightweight champion, the victory over Jose Ramirez, and a couple of defenses. So Camacho is in and out. Foster trying to find him. And Camacho once again keeping cool with kind of a breezy trunks. And Foster may have uh, struck with the right hand. Yeah, against the left-handed fighters, those right hands work real well. It's difficult to use your jab because of their right hand, but Todd Foster is using it. There it is from Foster. If he can continue to use that jab, he can score with it. Maybe he can get... Hector watching the jab, and then he sneaked in a right hand. Well, the two got to watch their heads. That's what Frank Cappuccino just told him. Foster, who uh, has a problem with the cuts. He's been down just twice in his career, in two fights. But once he was clocked, he was gone. Jimmy Paul knocked him down two times, and in a, a loss to John Larks, he was down four times in the fight, but that was his last fight at 135, and he said he just could not make weight anymore, and that was the result. Oh, yeah, very tough, Todd Foster. Not afraid to get hit and not afraid to hit back. 35 seconds to go in round number two. He was involved in the bizarre Olympic incident in Seoul. He was fighting the Korean fighter. And there were several rings in the venue. And during the fight, the bell rang from another ring. But Foster's opponent thought it was their bell, so he dropped his guard, and Foster dropped him. And it was ruled that uh, they should fight a rematch, which happened a couple hours later, and then Foster dropped them officially and won the fight. Now there could be some blood from the uh, right eye of Foster. Yeah, that blood, perhaps from that clash of heads earlier, in this round, in the first round, too, they banged heads. TVKO with the presentation from Atlantic City, the convention center. Macho Camacho now center stage. With Vinny Pazienza and Roberto Duran waiting in the wings for the main event. Frank Rodriguez, I think he's showing you what he wants there. He wants more body punches. Nobody with four and five. Don't get up in the air. Stay low. All right? Who's got the mouthpiece? Stay low. Stay in this chair until the bell rings. Don't get up. Excellent instructions. Stay low. Remember what I said round before last about Todd Foster getting in trouble when he raises his head up? Jesse Reed sees that he wants to keep him down. Lower your center of gravity. When you get hit and your head is way up in the air, it really looks bad. It hurts too. 
When you're down, you can take that shot and come back with another. Foster has had pretty good success against southpaws and also against boxers. Trying to cut off the, the ring. He says he doesn't want to chase Camacho. And this is a pretty big ring to Camacho's advantage, which later may serve well for Vinny Pazienza. A lot of factors about this ring that may serve well for, for Vinny. Downstairs to the body goes Todd Foster. Good for him, following instructions. You know, with a fighter like Camacho, he is too good to stand out there and try to punch to his head. He's too good. You have to go into this fight with a plan, and that plan's got to be go downstairs. Don't try to don't try to hit his head. Go up, go down to the body first. Kind of wear down the body. Ah, 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 come on out! Come on out! Come on out! Camacho turned pro at the age of 18, 14 years ago, 1980. He's won three world championships. He won his first 39 fights before losing the WBO crowd to Greg Hogan. And he lost that fight by one point. And in that fight, he was penalized one point for not touching gloves at the start of the final round. That was the old, rebellious Camacho. Right now he's touching gloves with Foster. I think he's touching Foster's face with his gloves. The records of these two fighters, big numbers up there. Sean, how do you think that this new and improved version of Camacho would have done against Chavez and Trinidad? Well, when I've seen Camacho in the past against the ordinary fighters, he makes them look like amateurs. When he goes in there against somebody that has the power, that's where he has his problems. In, in the Trinidad fight and the Julio Cesar Chavez fight, Hector Camacho didn't really win a round. What he must do, I think, at this point in his career, is learn how to win the, some of the rounds, if not all of the rounds, for some of the bigger fights. There's a good straight left for him. So that's, that's what I see in him now. He is trying to reacquaint himself with these fighters and trying to win some of these rounds, box some of these rounds, adapt, change, show the versatility of Hector Camacho. Good combination from Foster downstairs and then up to the head. And good movement from Hector Camacho with a southpaw fighter. See how he moves? Hector moves to his right. It is a more natural move for a lefty. But Todd Foster, he's got the power in the right hand. He has to keep resetting that back foot. That's the confusion the last between the rounds and he did not really do that in the last round with a fighter like foster that's difficult to do because the way foster is getting down now you got to reach around for that body and foster coming out you can sense the air of confidence comes up a good third round and there's camacho holding on Pacino, the veteran referee, explaining to the two, come on, let's start fighting. Frank doesn't put up on any of those hijinks, Jack. Now, Frank Cappuccino, outstanding referee. And a tough referee. He's got tough with the crowd a few times in some fights. <laughs> he works in close yeah. to the fighters, too. He's been nailed. Oh, yeah, he's been hit. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, former boxer. Frank Cappuccino. Never down for the count. Yep, he's from that great fraternity, Cappa Cappuccino. Good sweeping left from Hector Camacho. This is scheduled for 12. Todd Foster has never gone 12 in his career. He's only gone 10 four times compared to 24 occasions by Camacho. Camacho knows how to spread out a fight and really pace himself. And you can bet that uh, Camacho right now sizing up his opponent and as he had said earlier if i could dissect oh. just like this and take him out in around six or seven otherwise he'll take him later in the fight and try to wear todd foster down this is the opportunity foster has to strike here oh, oh right. the shots out camacho just as foster had gained in confidence camacho now moving him back yeah, Hector Camacho said, Todd Foster will be perfect for me. He's a banger. He comes right straight in. He's, he's custom-made for me. And you know what? In that sense, it's, it's 
that's exactly right. Foster now, out of anger, is rushing in just what Hector Camacho needs. This is where Hector Camacho can shine. Foster must try to work his way in, work his way in behind some punches. Now, the last round I talked about how Foster was jabbing, jabbing with Hector. Oh, he's not been jabbing as much this round. And that could be one of his many problems. The other problem is removing that glove from the front of his face. Slipping a little bit on some tape. There's some tape in the middle of the ring that Foster slipped on. Oh, yeah. This is some of the added power that Hector Camacho possesses now as a welterweight. That was a little bitty punch. He put his weight behind it. Some of the tricks of the trade. And that ends the round. And Camacho now has made it five for five. In his last five Listen fights, he has put me in the face. man on the what canvas. What are you doing? Stop him when you're inside. Let that rip. You hear me? That's why you got drilled. You relaxed and he hit you on the break. Now you get your hands and start punching until that referee says, stop. You hear what I'm saying? Put yeah, this I... nice guy stuff. You can win this damn thing. Get on this guy and start Pretty good idea. Wait till the referee says break. There is what happened. He walked in. Jesse Reed said he let down for a moment. And then the left hand, loving left hand. A confident short, Hector slapping George Foreman yep. versus Michael Moore type. Put right on him. shot. Yeah, while tying up the right hand, Todd Foster got hit with the left hand. Jesse Reed said, you let down, don't let down in there. All right, here comes Foster now. No more Mr. Nice Guy. And you see the swelling around the eye. Macho Camacho starting to pile up the points. And you can kind of see the points on Foster's face. And Foster, who was generally pumping around 80 to 100 punches per round, is way below par in this fight. Oh, and there's why. Being Freezing beat. him. Yeah. Yeah, when he gets hit, he freezes. He backs up and he, and he freezes too. And a very Hector, a very uh, patient Hector Macho Camacho comes out for this fifth round. He feels right now he has Foster where he wants him. And even in his corner, I told him just moments ago, no hurry, do what you're doing, you're doing fine. Not a hectic no, Camacho. That's, that's exactly yes. what I wanted to say. Thanks. Well, you keep feeding me these lines and I'll use them and you okay. give me the credit for Good combination. <laughs> Right now, the man with a good combination. Oh, yeah. oh, boy. Camacho. Oh, Foster is whacked. Camacho moving in. He senses that this is a window of opportunity. Does he end it here or does he want more airtime? Cappuccino should stay close. Foster holding on. Cappuccino takes a look, separates the two. There is a the standing eight count is in effect in New Jersey. And in this IBC fight, and Foster crumbles to the canvas. That's all. And that is it. Hector Macho Camacho unleashes the power of a, of a welterweight. And he has blasted out Todd Foster. And he looks to the heavens, and he knows there may be some new big paydays ahead. At this added weight, he says I have more power. Having knocked down Pat Lawler in two fights ago, Rusty Derwin in his last fight, having been able to put them down, not able to put out Pat Lawler, but tonight he sets up Todd Foster, cracks him with good sharp combination, puts him down and takes him out. Here's what happened. Todd Foster rushing in, cracked wobbling around Todd Foster out on his feet Hector Camacho knows it goes in to close patient now at age 32 Hector Camacho knew he had to settle down make his punches count another look at it Todd Foster just an opponent 
custom made for Hector Macho Camacho. And Camacho took him out. It was a must-win situation for both of these fighters. Hector Camacho moves forward, keeps on going. You know, we talked earlier about boxing needs the names in this sport, plus uh, Camacho also showing that he's still very much alive, and uh, he wants Pernell Whitaker. It was also mentioned that should Duran win against Pazienza, that is a possibility if uh, Duran who's about 167 pounds, comes down to 153, Camacho comes up. But frankly, even if Duran loses, I see that as a somewhat of an, an attractive matchup. And also, Hector Camacho asking us questions, curious about how did Buddy McGirt look the other night. So there are possible name matchups for Hector Camacho. As he said, if I come in and I look sharp and I look explosive. And against Todd Foster, he looked sharp and explosive. Well, he did. Todd Foster custom made Todd Foster was there to be hit walked right straight in and, and, and certainly got hit but tonight Hector Camacho showed that he does have the ability to knock fighters out not only just put them down but also take them out and that's what he did to Todd Foster all right let's get the uh, official count here's Michael Buffer ladies and gentlemen referee Brian Cappuccino calls a halt to the bout the official time one minute, 45 seconds of round number five, winning his fourth world title. He's now the IBC welterweight champion of the world. It's macho time, Hector Macho Camacho. Hector Macho Camacho plays to the crowd. He'll join us at ringside shortly, but now let's send it up to Bill. All right, Al, thank you very much. Hector Camacho winning his fourth world title, the IBC World Welterweight Championship, and near the end of the fourth round, Foster went down with that uh, Camacho short left hand, and then in the fifth round, he begins to pound Todd Foster. There's the left that wobbles the legs of Todd Foster. He still looks game. He looked over several times at the referee as if to say, I'm okay. He's moving me back, but I'm still hanging in there. And there had been questions about Camacho's power. After his uh, previous fights over the last year or so, but then in his last two, he's looked very impressive, knocking out Rusty Derwin several months ago. And tonight, you see that sense of power that Camacho was talking about as he absolutely pounds Todd Foster. And this one wisely stopped in the fifth round. There you see Todd Foster looking over. He did that several times. And that left right there sent Todd Foster to the canvas. And there was no doubt it was all over. Hector Macho Camacho, the new IBC World Welterweight Champion. Let's go down now to Alan Shaw. Al? All right, thank you, Bill. Hector, you said you had to look sharp, you had to look, expl ex look explosive. You did just that, but you also said that Todd Foster was a, a custom-made opponent for you. So how do you judge your performance tonight? Well, it's just like I expected. He came in, he wasn't shy to throw his punches. He kept trying to bring it to me. But as strong weights were going by, I knew I was going to start getting closer and closer to the target. Uh, he was a pretty hard puncher. I felt around the body and once in the head. But nothing damaged you. I just didn't want to get hit with nothing. I want to stay sharp. You, you feel that you finished this one actually sooner than you had anticipated? Yeah, but you know, I was just taking it as it come. All I know that I had it look very explosive. I was so hyped for this. No way I was going to lose today. No way. All right, uh, Hector, we got a monitor right there. Let's yeah, take a look at the, uh, this is your first look at the knockout. Uh, why don't you just tell us about it? Well, you know, I got him with that same punch. You know, the, the, in the fight, and I knew it was just meant to fight him with a good shot and pull him out. I knew I was hard punching, so I thought I would knock him out if I take it to him. Hector, you had cracked him in the first round, but you didn't really knock him out until the fifth. Did you know? From that first round that you cracked him, did you know he would go if you put him down? Yeah, I, I thought some quick shots to pull him out, but you know, patiently looking sharp. I know the eye is on me. You yeah. know, nobody was whispering. Yeah. Everybody was just looking because it wasn't like I was fighting a Chavez 
uh, Trinidad, uh, Whitaker, you know, that's when they, you see arguments and fights in the stands, you know. But this was just a, 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 a process. Part of the patience that uh, has recently happened in your life, right? Seeing yeah, in the rain. it's great because it gives me a title. Yeah. Already they're going to say, well, this ain't a world title. One title is like any title. I have the name. Now I'm going to start getting ready for Chavez. I want Chavez. I'm going to change on my one for example, for my title. Okay, Whitaker is there, he has business, he has plans. We'll, we'll coast down the pace, you know. Uh, anybody, I'm here, I'm ready to fight. And what about the possibility of Roberto Duran? Oh, uh, well, if Duran makes 153, because regardless, Duran is a strong man. You fight him, you want to tell him, come down 56. After, he'll starve himself, but when he put my food in his stomach one day before the fight, next fight he's going to be here like a house. All right, Roberto's just informed us he wants to get in the ring, so we thank you for joining <laughs> us, and we have to yes. move on. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Camacho, Camacho, Camacho. Oh, Camacho. Let's go back up to Bill. Bill. Thanks, Sean. All right, thank you very much, Al. That's the belt that belongs to Vinny Pazienza. His doctors told him he might never walk again.